In the heart of ancient Egypt, a series of supernatural events is about to trigger one of the greatest escapes in human history. Today, we will dive into the accounts of the ten plagues that preceded the liberation of the Israelites led by Moses. From rivers turned into blood to a darkness that covered everything, each plague carries a story and a lesson that resonates through the centuries. Join us as we reveal how these ancient texts still echo in our modern lives, showing that the past is not just history, it is a message. In Exodus chapter 7, God responded to Moses, assuring his authority before Pharaoh. Your brother Aaron will be your spokesperson, he said. You are to tell him everything I command you, and Aaron will tell Pharaoh to let the Israelites leave the country. However, God warned that he would harden Pharaoh's heart. Even though I multiply my signs and wonders in Egypt, he will refuse to listen. God then promised to intervene directly. I will lay my hand on Egypt, and with mighty acts of judgment, I will bring out my people, the Israelites, from their grasp. He concluded, The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring the Israelites out of it. Moses and Aaron, being 80 and 83 years old respectively, went to Pharaoh. At this moment, God instructed the duo, when Pharaoh demands a miracle, tell Aaron to throw his staff down before him. As instructed, the staff would turn into a serpent. Without hesitation, Moses and Aaron approached Pharaoh and followed the divine instructions to the letter. Aaron threw his staff at Pharaoh's feet and in front of his advisors, and before everyone's astonished eyes, the staff transformed into a serpent. However, Pharaoh, defiant, summoned his wise men and sorcerers. With their skills in the occult sciences, the magicians of Egypt replicated the feat. Each one threw down a staff, and they all turned into serpents. Despite this impressive counterattack, Pharaoh's heart remained unmoved and he refused to listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had predicted. In the face of this obstinacy, God instructed Moses again, tell Aaron to take his staff and stretch out his hand over the waters of Egypt, over rivers, canals, ponds, and all reservoirs of water. They will turn to blood. The blood covered the entire land of Egypt, reaching even the wooden and stone vessels. Moses and Aaron faithfully carried out the Lord's instructions, Aaron raised his staff and struck the waters of the Nile in front of Pharaoh and his advisors. Immediately all the water in the river turned to blood. The fish died, and the river emitted such a foul odor that the Egyptians could not drink its water. The blood spread throughout the land of Egypt. However, the magicians of Egypt, using their occult sciences, managed to replicate this phenomenon. Even in the face of such a demonstration of power, Pharaoh's heart remained unyielding. He did not heed the pleas of Moses and Aaron, exactly as the Lord had foretold. Later, the Lord instructed Moses again, Tell Aaron to stretch out his hand with his staff over the rivers, canals, and ponds, and make frogs come up on the land of Egypt. Obeying the command, Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and a multitude of frogs emerged, covering the land. However, using their magical arts, the magicians of Egypt were able to replicate this miracle, bringing frogs forth everywhere. It didn't take long for the Lord to give Moses the next instruction. Tell Aaron to stretch out his staff and strike the dust of the ground, and it will become gnats throughout the land of Egypt. Aaron executed the order, and when he struck the ground with his staff, gnats infested men and animals throughout Egypt. The dust of the ground became gnats, marking yet another divine sign. In a new attempt, the magicians of Egypt tried to produce gnats by their occult sciences, but failed this time. The gnats swarmed, infesting men and animals across the country. Recognizing the magnitude of the phenomenon, the magicians themselves told Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. Yet even in the face of this declaration, Pharaoh's heart remained hardened, and he refused to listen, as the Lord had predicted. Next, the Lord intensified his display of power. Great swarms of flies invaded Pharaoh's palace and the homes of his advisors. The plague spread throughout Egypt, leaving the land devastated by the flies. 
Then the Lord instructed Moses, Go to Pharaoh and deliver this message. This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says, Let my people go so that they may worship me. If you continue to refuse and keep them back, know that I will bring a devastating plague on your livestock in the fields. Horses, donkeys, camels, cattle, and sheep will be affected. However, I will make a distinction between the livestock of the Israelites and that of Egypt. None of the animals belonging to the Israelites will die. God then set a deadline, declaring, Tomorrow the Lord will carry out this promise in this land. And the next day the Lord did as he had said. All the livestock of the Egyptians died, but the Israelites' livestock remained untouched. Suspicious, Pharaoh ordered an investigation and found that not a single animal of the Israelites had died. However, his heart remained stubborn, and he refused to let the people go. The Lord then said to Moses and Aaron, Take handfuls of soot from a furnace and have Moses toss it into the air in the presence of Pharaoh. The soot would become a fine dust over the whole land of Egypt and cause festering boils on both people and animals. Following the divine instructions, they took the soot and stood before Pharaoh. Moses threw it into the air, and festering boils broke out on people and animals throughout Egypt. Despite the clear signs, the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he continued to refuse Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had predicted. Then the Lord instructed Moses, Stretch out your hand toward the sky, so that hail will fall all over Egypt, on people and animals, and on everything growing in the fields. When Moses stretched out his staff toward the sky, the Lord sent thunder and hail, and lightning flashed down to the ground. So the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. Hail fell, and lightning flashed back and forth. It was the worst storm in all the land of Egypt since it had become a nation. Throughout Egypt, the hail struck down everything in the fields, both people and animals. It beat down everything growing in the fields and stripped every tree. However, in the land of Goshen, where the Israelites lived, there was no hail. After this devastation, the Lord gave Moses a new command. Stretch out your hand over Egypt so that locusts swarm over the land and devour every plant that survived the hail. Obeying, Moses stretched out his staff over Egypt, and the Lord made an east wind blow across the land all that day and all night. By morning, the wind had brought the locusts. They invaded all of Egypt and settled in every area of the country in great numbers. Never before had there been such a plague of locusts, nor will there ever be again. They covered all the ground until it was black. They devoured all that was left after the hail, everything growing in the fields and the fruit on the trees. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward the sky, so that darkness spreads over Egypt, darkness that can be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward the sky, and total darkness covered all Egypt for three days. No one could see anyone else or move about for three days. Yet all the Israelites had light in the places where they lived. Still, Pharaoh's heart remained hardened, and he refused to let the people go. Furious, Pharaoh said to Moses, Leave my presence. Make sure you do not appear before me again. The day you see my face, you will die. Moses replied, It will be as you say. I will never see your face again. Then the Lord announced to Moses that he would send yet another plague upon Pharaoh and Egypt, the last and most devastating of all. Only after this final plague would Pharaoh allow them to leave, even driving them out completely. Therefore instruct the people, both men and women, to ask their neighbors for articles of silver and gold. The Lord had made the Egyptians favorably disposed toward the people of Israel, and Moses was highly regarded in Egypt by Pharaoh's officials and the people. Moses then conveyed the Lord's message to Pharaoh, Around midnight I will go throughout Egypt. Every firstborn in Egypt will die, from the firstborn son of Pharaoh, who sits on his throne, to the firstborn son of the female slave who is at her hand mill, and all the firstborn of the cattle as well. There will be loud wailing throughout Egypt, worse than there has ever been or ever will be again. 
but among the Israelites not a dog will bark at any person or animal. Then you will know that the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. Then you will know that the Lord makes a distinction between the Egyptians and the Israelites declared Moses. All these officials of yours will come to me, bowing down before me and saying, Go, you and all the people who follow you. After that, I will leave. Then Moses, hot with anger, left Pharaoh's presence. Moses then gathered all the elders of Israel and instructed them, Choose a lamb or a young goat for each family, and prepare it for the Passover celebration. Take a bunch of hyssop, Dip it into the blood in the basin and put some of the blood on the top and on both sides of the doorframe. None of you shall go out of the door of your house until morning. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and sides of the doorframe and will pass over that doorway, and he will not permit the destroyer to enter your houses and strike you down. Obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your descendants. After receiving these instructions, the Israelites did just as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. At midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on the throne, to the firstborn of the prisoner, who was in the dungeon, and the firstborn of all the livestock as well. During the night, Pharaoh and all his officials and all the Egyptians got up. And there was loud wailing in Egypt, for there was not a house without someone dead. That night, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Up, leave my people, you and the Israelites. Go, worship the Lord as you have requested. Take your flocks and herds as you have said, and go, and also bless me. The Egyptians urged the people to hurry and leave the country, for otherwise, they said, we will all die. The Israelites had lived in Egypt for 430 years. At the end of the 430 years, to the very day, all the Lord's divisions left Egypt. Because the Lord kept vigil that night to bring them out of Egypt, on this night all the Israelites are to keep vigil to honor the Lord for the generations to come. If you felt inspired by this story, imagine how many other incredible narratives we are exploring on this channel. Don't miss the chance to discover more. Subscribe, turn on notifications, leave a like, and join us on this journey of discovery and inspiration. Each video we share is a new opportunity to enrich your knowledge and your life. God bless.